Welcome to Tutorial 2, Running Dynamic Simulations. If you have not yet completed the first tutorial in the GPSX tutorial series, it is recommended that you do so before beginning this tutorial video. The goals of this tutorial are to provide new users with knowledge on how to set up both input controllers and output graphics, and how to run interactive simulations. We will begin by opening the model that was built in Tutorial 1. If you did not complete this tutorial, you can create the layout at this time, or you can open a pre-built layout by going to File, Sample Layouts. Save the model under a new name. You will notice that the name at the top of the window has changed to reflect that we are now working on Tutorial 2. Ensure that you are in simulation mode. If you are not in simulation mode, use the button at the top left of the screen to switch to simulation mode. First, we will create an input controller for the influent flow entering our plant. To do this, right click on the influent object and select Flow, Flow Data from the menu. Click on the influent flow label and drag it to the control tab in the upper left corner of the simulation environment. This will create a new input tab with an influent flow slider controller on it. The name of the tab can be changed by double clicking on it. Change the name of the tab to Flow Control and press Enter. The input controller properties can be edited by clicking on the Input Control Properties button on the Controls toolbar. This will open the Controls Properties entry form. The default minimum and maximum values for the controller are appropriate and do not need to be changed. A delta value is not required when using a slider type input controller. Accept this form. You can test this slider controller by clicking and dragging the small slider knob. The value of the influent flow will change to the value that is displayed on the slider controller. Before you proceed, reset the slider back to the default value of 2000 meters cubed per day by clicking on the reset button or by manually re-entering the value into the control box. We will now create an appropriate output display prior to running the simulation. To create a new blank output tab, click on the New Graph Tab button on the Outputs toolbar. To create a graph of the influent flow, right click on the influent object and select Output Variables Flow. In the Flow window, click on the Flow Variable label and drag it to the blank area on the new tab to create an XY graph. Next, right click on the Wastewater Outfall unit and select Output Variables Concentrations. Drag the total suspended solids variable onto the same graph. Select the Auto Arrange button on the Output toolbar to resize the graph. Click on the Output Graph Properties button and rename the graph Influent Flow and Effluent TSS. The Auto Scale feature can be selected to automatically set the value of the y axes based on the data that is available. Different graph types can be selected from the Output Graph Type drop down menu. For this tutorial, we will keep Auto Scale turned off and use an XY graph. Unlock the maximum value to allow different maximum values to be specified for each of the displayed variables. Set the maximum influent flow to 10,000 meters cubed per day and the maximum effluent TSS to 150 milligrams per liter. Now that the input controller and output graph have been set up, you are ready to run an interactive simulation. Specify a stop time of 20 days on the simulation toolbar at the bottom of the screen. To start the simulation, press the start button. While the simulation is running, adjust the input controller and assess the effects of influent flow on the effluent suspended solids concentration. If the simulation proceeds too quickly, you can increase the simulation length to 40 days so you have more time to interact with the simulation. We will now take a more detailed look at our plant performance by investigating the effects of flow on the secondary clarifier performance. Right click on the secondary clarifier and select Output Variables, Concentrations and Layers. Drag the total suspended salts and layers variable to the blank area next to the existing output tabs. By dropping the variable here, a new tab is automatically created with the new output graph. The variable we have selected actually represents an array of variables, which is denoted by the ellipses in the output variables window. By default, arrays of variables will create a bar chart with the array elements along the x-axis. Right-click on the graph and select output graph type. Select the horizontal bar chart option for this graph. 
Open the Graph Properties window and rename the graph Final Clarifier Solids Profile. Set the maximum value to 5000 mg per liter. Auto arrange the output graph so that it fills the output area. Reset the input controller to 2000 meters cubed per day. Set the stop time to 10 days and ensure that the stay state option is selected on the simulation toolbar. Start the simulation and view the effects flow has on the solids profile by adjusting the influent flow rate with the input controller. Save the layout. You have now completed tutorial 2 of the GPSX tutorial series. You should now be familiar with how to run and visualize a dynamic simulation in GPSX using input controllers and output graphs.